guys, I'm Sarah. Every week I come through hundreds of DIY videos preparing projects for our weekly maker show, Maker Break. Along the way, I find some good projects and some great ones. And right now, I'm gonna share them with you. This is Sarah's top five DIY French cleat projects. Rob and I are huge fans of the French cleat system and I've used it in more than one project this year, like our battery charging station, the Lego wall, and our Maker Break sign. So when the suggestion came into our comments a couple weeks ago about putting together a list of my favorite French cleat projects, I got pretty excited. So here we go. Number five is lasting build. Jim wanted to make some permanent spots in his shop for some of his most commonly used tools. So he laid out the four tools on a piece of plywood, stenciled out an outline around each tool, and then placed three inch blocks around them where they would be supported the most, making sure to mark each location. He pre-drilled the spots for the little blocks, then screwed those into place using a countersink so that they wouldn't interfere with the cleats. Once the glue dried, he added the top of the French cleat to the back of the tool board and then hung it on the supporting half of the cleat that was mounted on the wall. Number four is Maker Tails. Jonathan needed to make a fun floating shelf for his wife's office space that is mounted with, you guessed it, French cleats. He made a simple three-sided box shelf with plywood that he had in the shop and a piece of pine for the cleat. He suggests not using OSB or MDF for the cleat to ensure a strong hold. Once the shelf was assembled, he added three coats of fresh white paint, then tapped it off with a poly finish. Once the paint was dry, he attached the cleat to the shelf and then mounted the bottom of the cleat to the wall and carefully mounted the shelf. This is a fun little example of how you can use French cleats for mounting smaller projects like shelves, hanging artwork, or even a TV. Number three is Dutch Shed Woodshop. Okay, so if you've seen any of our past content, you may have noticed that I like things well organized. So it's really no surprise that this use for the French cleat system makes my OCD heart skip a beat. He made these little angled platforms for every spade, forstner, general purpose, countersink, and router bit that he has. He then built a simple frame around the shelves and added a cleat to the back so he could easily mount this storage solution to his French cleat wall. So I'm obsessed with this concept and having a wall of organization that you can quickly grab what you are looking for and just as easily return it is absolutely amazing. I love this. Number two is Homesteadonomics. Moving on to heavier storage solutions, Joe built these easy shop shelves and mounted them with French cleats. These are simple plywood carcasses held together with glue and pocket hole joinery. Once he got all four of them built and hung up on the cleats, he decided to fill in that backspace of the cabinets with sheet metal to seal off the opening. Next, he fastened them all together and added some face frames to give it a nice finished look. Mounting larger projects like these are made so much easier with the French cleats. Once you are confident that the cleats on the wall are level, you just lift your cabinet carefully, of course, and guide them into place to secure them. I may need to just make a couple of these for my garage. Number one is Frank Howard. If the last four projects were just not enough French cleat for you, Frank has the fix you need. He is updating a room in his house to be his new office and chose to make an entire wall out of French cleats for organization. Who said French cleat walls only had to be in the shop? He cut down a large piece of plywood into dozens of strips and then cut those strips in half at a 45 degree angle, making French cleats. Once he had the panels done for the wall, he started making the containers that would go on them and used a mix of CNC design work and traditional woodworking for these. So he made a few different versions along the way for the containers and honestly, watching Frank's thought process unfold in his videos is really entertaining to me. These are really, really cool. All right, that's it. I hope you guys liked my list, but of course, if you found a project you think should have made it onto my list, leave it in the comments below and I'll go check it out. Do me a favor and like this video, and if you have not already subscribed to Bells and Boxes, please go do that now, and be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any of our shows that come out during the week. You can catch me every Friday at 5 p.m. for the Power Tool Week in Review with Rob, and every Saturday at 6 p.m. for our next episode of Make or Break. We'll see you then.